The autumn of 1760 marked a pivotal moment in British history as the health of King George II, sovereign of Great Britain and Ireland, rapidly declined. Afflicted with blindness in one eye and hearing impairments, the aged monarch faced the inevitable challenges of advancing age. However, it was the morning of the 25th of October that witnessed a sudden and unexpected turn of events, culminating in the demise of George II and ushering in a transformative chapter to the British monarchy. In the autumn of 1760, the health of King George II, King of Great Britain and Ireland, had significantly deteriorated. By October of that year, he was not only blind in one eye, but also hard of hearing, signalling the challenges that he faced, maintaining his physical well-being. It was against this backdrop of declining health that a pivotal moment unfolded on the fateful morning of the 25th of October. On that day, George II adhered to his routine, rising at the customary hour of 6am. His morning ritual included the consumption of a cup of hot chocolate, a seemingly mundane act that bellied the historic significance of impending events. Following his morning beverage, the king proceeded to his close stall, intending to attend to personal matters and privacy. However, the ordinary quickly gave way to the extraordinary. A few minutes into his private moment, a loud crash echoed through the royal chamber, prompting immediate concern. The king's valet, alerted by the unexpected disturbance, hastened to the scene. To his dismay, he discovered George II on the floor, a peculiar sight given the circumstances. Frank Nichols, the king's physician, later documented the scene, noting that George II appeared to have just come from his necessary stall, the sudden and unexpected nature of the event left those in attendance bewildered, as the sovereign lay incapacitated on the chamber floor. Efforts were swiftly undertaken to address the situation. The fallen monarch was carefully lifted and placed into his bed, and Princess Amelia, a member of the royal family, was urgently summoned to his side. Tragically, before she could reach him, George II had already drawn his final breath. At the advanced age of nearly 77, he had outlived all of his English or British predecessors, leaving behind a legacy that had spanned decades. A subsequent post-mortem examination would shed light on the cause of George II's sudden demise. The findings revealed that he had succumbed to a thoracic aortic dissection, a serious and often fatal medical condition involving a tear to the aorta. This unforeseen and silent assailant had claimed the life of the aging monarch, marking the end of his reign and ushering in a new era for the British monarchy. The passing of George II held profound implications for the line of succession. His grandson, George III, ascended to the throne, inheriting the responsibilities and challenges that came with the royal mantle. The transition of power, though inevitable, signified a pivotal moment in British history. In accordance with regal traditions, George II was laid to rest on the 11th of November, with Westminster Abbey serving as the final resting place for the departed monarch. The grandeur of the Abbey, steeped in history and tradition, provided a fitting setting for the interment of a ruler who had witnessed and shaped significant chapters in the annals of the nation. The king's instructions for his burial added a poignant touch to the proceedings. George II had left explicit directives for the sides of his and his wife's coffins to be removed, a symbolic gesture that allowed their mortal remains to intermingle for eternity. This act of unity in death bespoke a desire for eternal togetherness, transcending the boundaries of earthly constraints. As the nation mourned the loss of its monarch, Historians and contemporaries alike reflected on the reign of George II. His longevity, marked by triumphs and challenges, had left an undeniable imprint on the pages of history. The events surrounding his death served as a reminder of the fragility of life, even for those who occupied the lofty heights of power. The legacy of George II endured beyond the confines of his mortal existence. His reign, characterised by political shifts, military conflicts and cultural transformations 
contributed to the evolving narrative of the British monarchy. The chapter that closed with his passing paved the way for a new era, one that would be shaped by the aspirations and endeavours of his successors. In the aftermath of George II's demise, the echoes of his reign reverated through the corridors of power and the collective consciousness of the nation. The transition of leadership, accompanied by the rituals of mourning and burial, underscored the cynical nature of monarchy and the perpetual march of time. As the sovereign found his final repose in the hallowed grounds at Westminster Abbey, the intricate tapestry of British history absorbed another thread. The death of George II was not merely the end of an individual's journey, but a juncture that marked the intersection of past and future, a moment that would shape the destiny of a nation for generations to come. In the wake of George II's passing, his legacy became an integral thread woven into a rich tapestry of British history. The rituals surrounding his death from the post-mortem revelation of thoracic aortic dissection to the symbolic gesture of intermingling coffins underscored the profound impact of his reign. As the nation mourned and reflected on the cynical nature of monarchy, George II's departure became a poignant chapter reminding all of the transient nature of power and the enduring legacy left by those who once occupied the throne. A heartbreaking tale of Queen Caroline, unravelling the tragic threads of a queen's life and ultimately her demise. In the big storybook of history, some stories make us smile, some bring tears, and others leave us lost in thought. The story of Queen Caroline, who stood by King George II, is one of those tales that touch the heart deeply. Her life journey, marked by struggles and ending in a terrible tragedy in 1737, is a story we need to explore. Join us as we unfold the layers of Queen Caroline's life, her battle with health and the sad event that led to her untimely end. Picture this, Queen Caroline, the partner of King George II, played a big role during his time as king from 1727 to 1760. Even though her time as queen was cut short, her smart mind and strong character won the trust of scholars and the king. King George II even made her regent, showing just how much he trusted her to run the kingdom. Now let's embark on an in-depth exploration of Queen Caroline's health a profound journey marked by the joys of indulgence and the agonies of physical ailments. Her love for food, a seemingly innocent pleasure, took a toll on her well-being, casting a shadow over her life. Queen Caroline's fondness for the gastronomic delights was well known, and her expanding waistline attested to this love affair with food. Indulging in rich feasts, she embraced the pleasures of the table, not realising that this culinary delight would unleash a silent adversary, gout. The painful condition attacked her joints, making every moment a challenge, as if the very act of walking was accompanied by a symphony of pain. Yet the trials of Queen Caroline's health didn't stop there. The tale took a heartbreaking turn with her journey through motherhood. Ten pregnancies and eight childbirths left an undeniable mark on her body resulting in the emergence of an umbilical hernia. This wasn't merely a physical burden, it became a source of deep embarrassment for the Queen. The hernia made her appearance, casting a shadow over her regal countenance. In response to the physical and emotional pain, she resorted to concealing this blemish beneath specially tailored garments, weaving a narrative of hidden struggles beneath the veneer of royalty. As the sands of time moved forward, Queen Caroline faced a fateful night in 1737, a night that would etch itself into the pages of tragic history. Attending a party, she was compelled to cut short her enjoyment due to excruciating pain in her belly. The ambience of merriment quickly transformed into a scene of distress. Summoning the best physicians available, Caroline's room became a stage for desperate medical interventions. Bleeding, purging and a daring operation unfolded, the latter conducted without the solace of sleep medicine. Tragically, the very hands that were meant to heal her committed a risky act, sealing her fate in a cruel twist of destiny. 
The progression of Caroline's health took a perilous turn, pushing the medical practitioners to explore unconventional measures in a desperate bid to save the Queen. Ignoring established medical wisdom, the doctors, in a daring move, decided to cut a portion of her ailing bowel. The weight of uncertainty hung in the air, yet Queen Caroline, even in the absence of medical aid, clung to her spirit. In the midst of this medical maze, the Queen displayed resilience that bordered on the extraordinary. She exchanged jokes with her attending physician, Dr. Ramby, a gallows humour that testified to her indomitable spirit. However, even the strength of her will couldn't shield her from the gravity of the unfolding tragedy. Despite the facade of humour, Caroline's pain intensified. The ability to ingest even the simplest substance eluded her, and as days turned into weeks, the inevitable transpired. The strained bowels ruptured, causing a burst that heralded three long days of unrelenting agony. Finally, on the sombre date of the 20th of November, 1737, Queen Caroline departed this world within the confines of St James's Palace, London, with her husband, King George II, standing vigil at her bedside. As the curtains closed on this poignant chapter, the tale of Queen Caroline's health emerged as a tapestry woven with threads of indulgence, affliction and an unyielding spirit that flickered until the last breath. The pages of history bore witness to a queen who faced a multitude of physical trials, each chapter etched with a language of sorrow. Caroline's funeral held at Westminster Abbey on the 17th of December 1737 was a sad day in royal history. King George II asked Handel to create music for her, called The Ways of Zion de Morn. At her funeral, special seats were set up for important people to watch, something that hadn't happened before. In a touching move, King George II planned for matching coffins with removable sides. He wanted to rest next to his beloved Queen. The sad end of Queen Caroline left a big mark in history, not just for the mistakes in her treatment, but also for changing how royal funerals were done. Her memory lives on, showing how smartness, strength and life's fragility mix even in the grand world of royalty. Queen Caroline's story unfolds like a powerful chapter in the big book of history, showing us that even queens face tough times. Her cleverness, strength and courage during her struggles make her a very special figure from the past. As we dig into her story, we get a closer look at the queen who left her mark on history leaving us with a tale woven in the threads of sadness, complexity and the strength of the human spirit.